Hi there and welcome to the Bella Buzz. My name is Bella and today I'm going to be joined by my good friend Anya Murphy and it is theatre week. So along with the other shenanigans that we usually get up to, we're going to be talking all things theatre as well as reading out your poll results from the Instagram. So sit back, shut up and listen. So 79 additional coronavirus cases have been reported on the Diamond Princess, also dubbed as the coronavirus cruise ship. At least two of the six Irish people on board have tested positive for the virus, bringing the total to 621 cases. Nominations for the Keown Corla will close this evening ahead of the first meeting of the 33rd Dáil. However, it is uncertain as to when the newly elected Irish government will form and Sinn Féin, Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael are refusing coalition for a majority government. An 80 metre vessel ship washed up on the shore in Cork earlier this week after spending a year floating in the Atlantic. The vessel was travelling from Greece to Haiti 16 months ago when the crew on board had to be rescued. Cork County Council and the Irish Coast Guard are working closely on the matter of removal and safety regarding pollution to the coastline have you heard of any of them this week only about the coronavirus that one's been the, the i think the cruise ship is mad yeah like imagine scary. like sitting mm -hmm. and you've nowhere to go like i don't like a cruise ship anyway yeah but imagine you're like locked in and you're actually quarantined on, on, on a water. ship like yeah. there's nowhere for you to go i have my worst nightmare you'd be Absolutely. scared for life so this week hmm we have our meme of the week, um, and it is Love Island themed, although I don't think we'll get into the whole discussion of poor Caroline Flack um, and the mistreatment that she faced with the media. I think Ian Sterling and Laura Whitmore put it into words beautifully. Meme of the week is anything related to the public opinion shift towards Shanice. <laughs> Shanice Fudge. And I have to say, hands up. I was not fond of her when she started. I really wasn't. Do you know, I don't think it was that I wasn't fond of her. I think she just was a bit irritating. Like, she just yeah. had, like, there was just a quality, but she's one of those people, like, you meet them in, in general life yeah. where you actually have to get to know them to actually like them. I think I was cringing a bit because I could see part of myself when she was talking <laughs> about Disney. And I was kind of having a bit of like it was you. secondhand <laughs> embarrassment being like, oh, God, that's what I actually sound like. So I think that's probably why I was like, oh that's no, Shanice. But she's gotten lucky now with Luke. I love, I love him. him. He's so and lovely. And I think the two of them are going, are definitely going to do well when they come out. I actually think I they want will. them to win. I know Finn and Paige. Finn are, and Paige are set to win. I think they're the front runners. But people yeah. said that about Tommy and Molly. Just because you're together the longest don't mean you're going to win. Yeah. Prediction now, who's your top three? Prob definitely Luke and Shanice. Luke and Shanice. Um, Paige and Finn. Paige and Finn. And maybe Callum and Molly, I'm not gonna lie. Really? Kinda like them. I actually really like Molly. I feel sorry for her. Really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Because I think she's, I think she's a bit conflicted because she's obviously, she really, really likes him. And yeah. she wants to see what she saw in Casa Amor. Yeah. And I think small little details are coming out. I think he's changed out. it, yeah. I think he's kinda like... Yeah, changes too. I don't think I don't think himself and Shauna were suited, and I do believe yeah. that they they needed to separate. But just the way it, he went about it wasn't yeah. fantastic. Now the meme that I'm talking about for Shanice is this very specific one. Week one, talking about Shanice shoelace, Sean's niece, Shane is, <laughs> and now it's Shanice of House Fudge. First of her name, queen of the memes, and protector of Luke's. Yeah, that was some character development. Yeah. Oh, like, big time. But yeah. like, like I said, she's literally just one of those people that you actually, you either get a taste of or you just don't, don't want anything yeah. to do with them. And like, she still has her moments. Yeah. It will be kind of like, oh. Oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And she, oh, but she's good. She yeah. is. She's a character. She is. Definitely. So we're getting on to our discussion topic and it was discussion poll and this is the poll that I put up on Instagram every week on the Tuesday before the show. Fave time of the week. Fave time of the week. <laughs> I'm actually, a lot of people have yes. reassured me that I they like doing them. I love a poll, love a poll, I have to say. It's really interesting yeah. to see from your peers and from uh, like, now the poll, I do know certain people who vote in it, the age I'm going to say starts from 14 and goes as far as 55 plus. Really? Yeah. 
and there was 150 votes this week and it was all theatre based because it is theatre day oh. so I'm going to kick it off so did you participate in theatre when in school 77% said yes and 23% said no that's a lie <laughs> unless you went to an educate together yeah. you were forced into the nativity you were definitely that sheep she yeah. in the back row I was always something really unimportant like an angel I was the angel I never got to be married I always never, wanted to be married never the princess it's fine <laughs> did or do you enjoy participating in theatre 88% said yes and 12% said no. I'll take that. That's happy with me. But that's not even just like being on stage. That's like the backstage stuff yeah. as well. Like people enjoy doing that as well. Front of house. It's still part yeah. of everything. You're still being a part of it. Like. It's nice to see that it's so positive. You find that people not only, maybe they don't want to be part of it, but they just like to watch it. Yeah. They just like to enjoy and sit and enjoy and watch a bit of it. Audience theater. members participate. You're very yeah, right there. Well, well done, Anya. Thank you. Now, choose between Greece or High School Musical. 60% said Greece and 40% said High School Musical. It's the same story. <laughs> I didn't think, I don't know if yeah. you thought you were being really clever, yeah. going, oh, I'll pick this one. It's, it's the exact the same. same story. Now, to be fair, I love Greece, holds mm. a special place in my heart. High School Musical, I think it's just that bit more cheesy. I'm just after realizing I essentially played the same part in both of them. No, she wasn't that. No, Rizzo mm. isn't as mean as Sharpay. Mm. You, She's protecting her girls. You Sharpay was just protecting her drama club. She does. Sharpay was a victim. She um, has this whole thing of Sharpay being, <laughs> I don't know, some savior to us all. She is. <laughs> she so is. I will take that to the grave. <laughs> Sharpay is a victim. But they're essentially the same person. Really, mm. they play the same idea or character. Yeah. I would say, yeah. God, I didn't know I was that predictable. Anyway, here we are. Oh, stop. <laughs> so have you been to theatre? Have you been to the theatre within the last six months? Six months? Six months? Months. Six months. 75% <laughs> uh, said yes and 25% said no. That's decent as well. Yeah, but that's not even, that's not just going to the board gosh and seeing mm. all the big shows. Those, like, pantos happened all over Christmas. Yeah. That's the same. Yeah. Literally the same. Some people actually forget that. That panto is... Theatre. Theatre, like yeah. just because you have the idea of musical theatre and that sort of thing mm. and plays, that sort of thing. But panto is essentially being part of theatre. Like. Oh yeah, it's just camp theatre. Yeah. I think that's an appropriate way to describe it. It's, yeah. it, it's very liberating. Yeah. Anything goes with panto. And that's what I've learned this year. Everyone enjoys a panto. I yeah. know a very limited amount of people that don't enjoy a panto. Well, funny enough, this was my first year participating in a panto yeah. because I never really went to see them as a kid either. Really? And I was literally thrown in the deep end. So this was so. all new to me. So it was kind of a hit the ground running and learn. Yeah. And yeah. I only dared to ad lib one night. <laughs> and it was one and then I, I was like, okay, I've done panto now, I've ad libbed and I'm done. I've been, I've lived. I've, I've lived. lived. <laughs> and it's different when, you know, ad libbing between maybe comedy sketches that we'd do, yeah. but when did these people were, I'm gonna say, a lot more professional than I was. So I felt like I was the newbie. And I enjoyed it so, so much, but I ad libbed once, and that was it, and I was done. And I was like, but okay. you had it, you had your taste of it. I needed to do it at least once, otherwise I probably didn't get the whole panto experience. I did forget to come on stage at one point too. I actually remember that. Yeah. <laughs> That was an experience. <laughs> Everyone was like, where did Bella go? <laughs> I was sitting in the, the dressing rooms listening to stories scoffing my face and all I heard was, Jolie! And I was like, that's me. I'm meant to be on stage. <laughs> well sure, listen, as you were talking about different types of theatre there, do you prefer plays or musical theatre? 18% said plays and 82% said musical theatre. Mm. I think maybe the musical numbers move the story on a bit. Yeah. I, not gonna lie, not a fan of a play. Really? Yeah, now, however, one of my favorites is the play that goes wrong. And there's no music in that, it's just, but it's just funny. funny. Like yeah. I don't, I like a comedy play. Yeah. Cause I feel like the humor in it just makes it move along a bit. Yeah. Like my mom, really involved in amateur plays. Yeah. And I've watched her do the comedy ones and I've watched her do the serious ones. And I have to say I've preferred the comedy, just because I'd be sitting at the serious ones going, yeah. Ooh. Now I'd love to be part of a serious one. Yeah. Just once, just to, just see to what it's about. experience it, but not, I wouldn't sit and watch it. The only one that had a very serious message in it, but I think the script was quite funny that I was in, was we did a script reading test 
for a play in the Peacock Theatre. Oh, yeah. And it was before it was before the eighth um repeal the eighth campaign. Mm -hmm. But it was talking on the subject of abortion and it was following yeah. a group of kids who were going to go over to the UK to help their friend get an abortion. And the comedic side of it was the conversations that they had because they were so young. Yeah, and then the serious yeah. underbelly was that they were going over for something so serious. Yeah. So quite like the snapper. Yeah. Yeah. I and like the, the snapper yeah. actually. Yeah. It had it had a serious topic. Yeah. But it still was able to play off humour to it's very Irish, I love the yeah. snapper, it's great. Yeah, I love the snapper. That's a big turkey. <laughs> now, so here I'm going to have to <clears throat> clear my voice and I want to get this in one take. I want to get it. So what is your favourite part of the theatre? So out of the 150 submissions that we've had, I've narrowed them down in the, you know, the, the repeats to this. Music, lights, rehearsal, dancing, the set, costumes, the atmosphere, storytelling, the friends you make, singing, captivating performances, backstage, banter, orchestra, director's interpretation, subplot, chorus members, seeing hard work pay off and all of the above. There she goes. There she goes. Got I've got another one of these to come as well though. Cool. I don't think there's anything missed out there. No. No. Definitely. All those things. Yeah. Definitely the best part. It's yeah. Like, I everything. think my favourite thing I'd have to say is making friends. Love it. That is definitely one of my favourite parts. And you'd be surprised who you actually click with. Yeah. When you actually, like, so you have, I know from my own experience, I'd have my friends. Yeah. But you meet so many other people that you wouldn't have thought would have been your friends and you have the same interests. Yeah. And it's just great to actually sit and have a conversation with these people and you have the same interests and you already know that. And it's just great in that way. For me, it's the payoff. Yeah. You know, I enjoy the rehearsals, I enjoy the banter, I enjoy the costumes, getting ready in the, the dressing rooms and things like that. But the payoff of, it's going to be sound like so much like Rachel Berry, the applause. Yeah. Just the reassurance that you, everyone on that yeah. stage did a great job and you're like, yeah, we did. We yeah. did do a great job. You know that point, like, after you've done the, and everyone's just standing there and you're setting your thanking yeah. everybody and you just kind of get emotional, like you get a bit teary eyed. Yeah. Yeah, and you're kind of like, oh, I'm really sad it's over. Yeah. Like one of those kind of like, ooh, okay. I can't describe post-show blues. I really can't. Oh. They're very bad. Very, yeah, very bad. It takes a long time to shake it. They do. Yeah. Now, here's our, our second list that I have there to get go. through here. What is your favourite musical? <laughs> and apparently... It's all of them. Every single one. And here are the submissions. <laughs> Singing in the Rain, Grease, Legally Blonde, Wicked, Billy Elliot, Waitress, Lion King, Blood Brothers, Rocky Horror Show, Pippin, Everybody's Talking About Jamie, Hairspray, Phantom of the Opera, Mamma Mia, Cabaret, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, Jacqueline Hyde, Hamilton, Town, Heathers, Chicago, Dear Evan Hansen, Book of Mormon, Into the Woods, JCS, Company, Wizard of Oz, Miss Saigon, Rock of Ages, Mean Girls, Anastasia and Les Mis. Wow. I'm impressed. That's amazing. <laughs> That's so many. And I I don't think I can think of another one. It's not even that there's like the generic Little Mermaid. One. That's a good one. Mm. She likes that one. Mm. <laughs> we like that one. <laughs> there's not like there's more than just generic ones like the likes of Wicked and Grease. Miss Saigon would like it's a popular one but it's not. That's beautiful. Yeah. I've never seen it. But Neither it's have beautiful. I. I love the music. Yeah. Sometimes when you sit, you, when you, you think you've actually seen it, when you're just sitting at home blaring Isn't the soundtrack yeah. for hours on end. Love imagination. Yeah. Love imagination. I did that with Hamilton. So pick from that list that we said. Yeah. Pick your top one and your bottom one. Top one and bottom one. Yeah. From that list. Ooh. Oh my God. Okay. Top. Mm. Mm. Top one, I have to say, Legally Blonde. Legally Blonde. Only because it's always been my favourite. Yeah. My favourite movie when it was out as a movie. Yeah. And then we actually did Legally Blonde a couple of years ago. And I have to say, I have never, it's the happiest musical I have ever, ever been a part of or ever seen. And it's just such a feel good thing. Actually, I have a Dirty Dancing. Not, you wouldn't think it, very, very good. Such a feel good thing. I went with my mom, yeah, and it was such a feel good musical, but definitely Legally Blonde is my favorite. And a bottom, and the bottom, ooh, I know mine too. Into the Woods, really? I liked Into I the Woods, I don't like Into the Woods, really? No, I don't like, I don't like that it doesn't read like I don't like the end of the storyline, like it doesn't have a happy ending. 
I know that sounds so such as life cheesy, yeah. but I just don't like that it doesn't have a happy ending. Now my my bottom there is um, Phantom of the Opera. Really, yeah, I love Phantom. It was just now the production of the show was fantastic and the mm. talent was amazing. Yeah, I think I'm just a little bit emotionally scarred from it. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I, and I don't think that's an exaggeration either. <laughs> it was a beautiful show yeah. and there was so much hard work <laughs> went into it. But I know a part of me dies a little bit when I hear Think of Me. Oh. I don't think that's an exaggeration. And my favourite that I can do a one woman show of quite proudly. And um, have you seen the video of my one woman show of One Day More? No. I'll show you during the break. Um, <laughs> Is Les Mis. That is wow. my top yeah. favourite musical. That's and that's amazing. That introduced me to musicals. Really? So, yeah. Wicked was my one that introduced me to musicals. No, I had seen Phantom and I would seen Wicked before I took part in Les Mis. Like, I knew of them, but mm. actually doing musicals fall out. Yeah. Um, Les Mis was my first musical. Yeah. So yeah. it has a special place in my heart. And it, what's lovely is that within six months of doing my first Les Mis, I did another and I got a part. So it kind of, and that was that was the ball rolling of, yeah. you know, actually getting somewhere yeah, you, with doing shows. Yeah. So it, it was the birthplace Definitely, for me. Yeah. So we are gonna continue on with our usual shenanigans, but keeping with the theme, and that is the Netflix and chill. But what we're gonna be talking about instead is movie musicals. So part of the poll, there was a question, and it said, what is your opinion on mus uh, movie musicals? 87% said love them and 13% said leave them. What do you think? Mm, me personally prefer to see the musical on stage. Yeah. However, I do sit, I, I personally would consider a Disney movie a movie musical. Yeah. Because most, at the moment, most Disney movies are made into musicals, musicals. anyway. Yeah. So I love a Disney movie also. Yeah. So I love them. Like, all the classics, definitely like the likes of Grease and the likes of Hairspray, love them. Maybe like the newer ones like Cats, probably not. I think Cats and Mamma Mia um, 2 learned a big lesson there that it doesn't always yeah. trans... It does not like... Oh, Mamma Mia, the first one, I think actually did transfer to screen love quite Mama well. Mia. Yeah. I think it did. But Cats, I mean, some things are made for stage for a reason. No. And I didn't fun. go to see it in the end. I was kind of excited about it and I'm not a Cats fan no, I'm really I not hate it. I I'm, hate it yeah I hate it I'm not a big fan of cats at all and I was still kind of like mm, maybe yeah. I'll go see it and then I left the show no like the, oh, the movie. movie I had to walk out I was oh like, no way awful oh yeah it was that bad and I don't even like the musical as it is yeah. but when I sat there I was like oh they have literally taken something that I already didn't like and just made it 10 times worse while doing a screen check in work I saw I think 10 seconds of the Jellicle Ball and when I mean I was really uncomfortable yeah. I was really uncomfortable yeah. when you actually go to see the musical obviously they're dressed in the really tight outfits and they have the makeup and everything I think I would have preferred that than all the cinematography I think I think Hollywood are taking CGI too far yeah while it can be really impressive in the likes of superhero action films yeah I feel like and <laughs> and, and even even in Star Wars because a lot of the, like when they did the first three films a lot of that was practical effects yeah. with the likes of the the heavy prosthetic makeup and I feel like they need to learn a lesson and go back to just actual practical effects yeah. rather than special effects, Definitely. which I mean can be extremely impressive. And can, oh, they're amazing at what they can do. Yeah, but it's not I, always necessary. No. At one stage, I, I watched it, and Taylor Swift just did not look like Taylor Swift at all. That's interesting. <laughs> she just didn't look like like they don't actually. The whole idea is that they're not actually cats even though they are cats yeah it's like yeah i don't know i just think it's I, not made for a movie i feel like cgi has this certain i'm gonna say shine about it do you know what i'm yeah. talking about here yeah whereas you know like i'm talking about like you know human texture of skin they've yeah. more or less managed to do it for animals but i feel like humans are a little bit more complex yeah. with our complexions that it's, it just has yeah, this the shininess. Lion, the Lion King is amazing. The yeah. way that was done was 
unreal. Yeah. But that was done as animals. So yeah. they they had to make it look like they were talking. I think it would have been better if they just had cats and then used them to voice over. <laughs> like that's what it looked like. It just looked it looks too fake. Just do it as a cartoon. Exactly. Honestly. <laughs> um, but another thing that I want to talk about is that this summer there are two major movie musicals going to come out more or less around the same time. And they are both set in New York. And they both follow two Latina South American neighborhoods in New York. But they are set in two very different times. Mm. And one is West Side Story, and it's directed by Steven Spielberg, and it's going to star Ansel Elgort as Tony. And the other is In the Heights by Lin-Manuel Miranda. I think there's major competition there. And I, my opinion on West Side Story, which I do quite like, if it's, don't, if it's not broke, don't fix it. The movie didn't really need an update. No. And as far as the In the Heights one, I... I'm a fan of the music, but I have to say I'm a little surprised that this was the next one to be made into yeah, I it. I thought it was something else. Yeah. Now, the only nice thing about both of this is that um, both of these films, there's no special effects needed as such. No. You know, there's no cats. No. So it's going to be pretty straightforward. They're both yeah. in New York, but it's just two different times. But um, I think they would have been better off releasing one at a time. They're just, they're both scheduled for summer 2020. Yeah, I don't think, I feel like one after, like one this year and one next year I think would have been better for, yeah. th for them. Like Now they're two, well are they, they're both based on turf wars. Now one's by a gang of dancing Italians and Puerto Ricans, but the other <laughs> one... I love that idea. <laughs> <laughs> I love that concept. Yeah, we're gang yeah. members, but we've each had 12 years of ballet. Exactly. Um, but I I feel like In the Heights might be an advantage here because the the style of the music is rhythm and blues rap. Uh, just think of Hamilton, yeah. but set in the the twenty tens and below. I think it's I think it's between the two yeah, thousands yeah. and nineties. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just that like that time in between. Yeah. Romeo and Juliet is West Side Story. Is West Side yeah. Story like yeah. so? I love that idea. Like I was a big fan of the Leonardo DiCaprio, Romeo and Juliet. Oh, the Baz Luhrmann. Yeah, yeah. Very big fan. Mm. And then I remember seeing West Side Story and being like, "Wow, I love this idea." Interpretation. Yeah. yeah. And I remember I think it was when I was in third year doing it for the junior search, and I actually said, "Can we watch West Side Story? It's literally the same." Yeah. Like I thought it was like, I was like it's literally the same thing. Like I love West Side. Yeah. But in the Heights. Not as bit much of a fan of the actual story. Right. More of a fan of the music. Yeah. Like, I love the whole idea of, like... Do you think it's style over substance? Yeah, I, that's what I would say. And, okay. like, I think because of the name Lynn Mama Miranda has given himself yes. over Hamilton, like, he's been very, very successful. But I think people forget that In the Heights was done before Hamilton. Yeah. So... He wasn't that successful then. Like, he wasn't as successful. He was very successful, but not as successful. He doesn't have the same status that he has yeah. now. I mean, he's doing the new music for the the Little Mermaid remake. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's huge. That's meant to be very good as well. I'm really interested to see how they're going to do the, the talking mm -hmm. in the water. Yeah. That's what I really want to see. Yeah. You know? Maybe so. CGI maybe. <laughs> oh, more CGI. I love that for us. So that's it for the Bell of Us for this week. Say thank you to Enya Murphy for joining me today and being a fantastic co-host. can I say? I couldn't think of anyone more qualified. Well, here we are. <laughs> Not qualified at all. No. Um, very uneducated opinions. <laughs> but uh, thank you for coming along and we'll be back next week. Bye guys. Bye.